Hello everyone, it's Zaid again from zsecurity.org and in this video I'm going to teach you how to use a tool called Empire to create a Windows backdoor that is not detectable by antivirus programs. Now Empire doesn't come pre-installed in Kali, so please check out the link in description to see how to install Empire. Empire generate backdoors that work using PowerShell and PowerShell is a framework made by Microsoft that basically expands the basic command prompt that's used in Microsoft in Windows and it comes in pre-installed from Windows 7 and up. So the first step is going to be creating a listener so that we can receive connections whenever the backdoor is executed on the target computer because we're going to be using a reverse connection so whenever the backdoor is executed it will try to connect back to our machine instead of us connecting to the backdoor. This way will be less detectable and will be able to bypass a lot of firewalls. And you can see right here when we started the tool, we can see that we have zero listeners. So the first thing that it actually pointed to us that we have no listeners at all. So to create a listener, the first thing I'm going to type in is listeners. And that's going to take me to the listeners menu. And as you can see, it's telling us that there is no listeners at the moment. To use a listener, we're going to use a command called use listener. And then I'm going to press space and press the tab button from my keyboard twice. And as you can see, it's listing all the listeners that I can use. So I can use a interpreter listener. I can use a HTTP hub, HTTP com, and just a normal HTTP. And that's the one I'm going to use. So this is basically very similar to what we do when we use the multi handler with Metasploit. So we're kind of doing the what we used to do, but we're starting from the bottom. We're starting with creating the listener first, and then we're going to create our backdoor. So I'm going to use a HTTP listener. And if I type in info, it will show me the information about this particular listener. And I can set any of these options using the set command. So you can set the listener name. You can set the date for the listener to be deleted. You can set all of these options by basically just typing set and then you set the option name. You can see right here it's already setting my IP address to the correct one. So it's already detecting that my IP is 1020.14.213. And it's already using my port to port 80. And I don't want that. I want to use port 8080. So to, ch to change that, and for you to have an example of changing an option, all we we're going to do is just going to do set. We're going to put the option name, which is port. And this is case sensitive, so make sure you spell it properly. And then we're going to put the value that we want to change the port to. And we're going to change that to 8080. Now if I, gonna, if I do info, you'll see that my port got changed to 8080 right here. But if you look in here, you'll see that the port is still pointing to port 80. Now it used to change this automatically when you set the port option here, but it doesn't do that anymore. So if you change the port and you still see the same old port in here, you're gonna have to change it in here again using the set command. So this is gonna be very similar to the way we change the port. So we're gonna say set, and then the option name that we want to change is the host. So we want to change the host to HTTP, I'm going to set the exact same IP because that's correct. So it's 10.20.14.213. And the only thing that I want to change is the port, which is 8080. So I'm going to hit enter now and do info again. And as you can see now, I have the correct port here. That's going to be used for the listener. And I have the correct IP and the correct port here in the host that will be used for the staging when interacting with our backdoor or stager. Now at any stage of using Empire, if you are unsure or if you forgot what commands you can use, you can just type in help and you'll get a list of all the commands that you can do right now. So right now we're inside the listener. So what the commands that we can do are these commands. 
And the one that I'm interested in is execute to create this listener for me. So I'm gonna type in execute. And you can see that it's telling me that my listener is started successfully. So if I do back, I'm gonna go back to the listeners. And if I do list, it's listing one listener for me. So you can see the active listeners and you can see that this listener is a HTTP. It's, it's called HTTP, so its name is HTTP. And it's also using a HTTP module. So basically the communication or the connection will be done over HTTP. And my IP is set to 10.20.14.213 and it's using port 8080. So if I go back again now, and go to the main menu, you can see that I have one active listener. And this listener will always be active every time I run Empire. So if I exit out of Empire and run it again, you'll see that I already have one active listener. So as soon as you start Empire right now, it's gonna start the listener that we created, which is a HTTP listener, and it's gonna wait for incoming connections on port 8080. So whenever someone runs your backdoor, you'll be able to catch that connection and communicate with your backdoor. Now we haven't created a backdoor yet. To do that, we're gonna use a command called useStager. So if I do help, you'll see that we have a command called useStager. And basically, Empire calls backdoors stagers. They call them that because of the way Empire backdoors work. First of all, they generate secure communication between the client and the server, so between the target and us. They do that using AES encryption, and they use a key exchange protocol called EKE. So while this process happens, the code gets executed in stages, and that's why it's called a stager. So if I just type in use stager and hit the tab button twice, you'll see all the types of backdoors that I can create. So I can create multi backdoors, which should work on different on or multiple operating systems. I can create OS X backdoors, as you can see in here, and I can create Windows backdoors. And what I'm interested in at the moment is to create a Windows backdoor and we're gonna create Windows Launcher Bat, which creates an executable with a Bat extension. So I'm gonna use Stager, and then I'm gonna put the name of the Stager that I want to use, which is Windows Launcher. Now I'm inside that Stager, and if I type in Info, it'll show me all the options that I can set for that Stager. Again, I can set these options using the set command and the most important one that we want to do is to set the listener name remember when we created the listener we called it http so to change the name in here we're gonna set and i'm, I'm gonna set the name to http and the next thing that i want to set is the out file so this is the location and the name where the out file is going to be stored or the backdoor now you can store it anywhere you want. I'm just gonna store it in var www.html evil files. Now var www.html is the web root of the web server. So it's the location where you should put the files that you want to host on the web server that comes in Kali. And I manually created a directory called evil files in there to store all my evil files and backdoors. So make sure you set this to a location that actually exists on the system. And I'm gonna call this file empire http 8080 and this is gonna be dot bat. So we're using the set command to set an option. The option that we're setting is out file which is the location where the backdoor or the stager gonna be stored and we're storing it in var www html evil files and we're calling the file empire http 8080.bat. So if I hit enter and do info, you'll see all my options are set correctly. And I'm gonna do execute 
to generate this backdoor. And you can see that we got a message telling us that the backdoor is stored in var www html evil files empire http 8080. Now if I go down, you'll see that my empire backdoor is already stored in var www html evil files. Now before I send this to my to my target machine, I'm going to test it in node distribute and see how well it performs. So I'm going to give the location of it in here. So it's stored in var www html evil files and it's called empire http 8080.bad. I'm going to click on open upload or scan file and as you can see we managed to bypass pretty much all antiviruses except two so it only got detected by Casper Sky and Avast and it managed to bypass all other 35 antivirus programs now let's test this backdoor and make sure that it works and this is already listening for incoming connections, so all we have to do is literally just download the backdoor and run it. Now this is obviously not a smart way of delivering a backdoor to the target, but right now we're not talking about delivery methods, we're only talking about creating a backdoor that works on Windows and bypasses antivirus programs, so we just want to test this backdoor. So our backdoor is stored in 10.20.14.213, evil files. And this is it. It's called Empire HTTP BAT. So I'm going to download it. Now, as you can see, the backdoor doesn't look very convincing. So chances are, if you send this backdoor like this to the target, they probably won't run it because it looks like something scary. Even though their antivirus might not flag it, it still looks suspicious. Again, like I said, the point of this lecture is to create an undetectable backdoor. And then from this backdoor, you can convert it and make it look like an image or like a PDF or use any other delivery method that you know to hack into the target. This video is actually taken from a full course that I have on social engineering, where I teach how to generate undetectable backdoors to all operating systems. So not only for Windows, I cover OS X, Linux, Android, and I cover how to disguise backdoors and make them look like images, PDFs, or any other file types. And I also cover advanced delivery methods where you can send, where you can deliver the backdoor to the target using social engineering by using fake emails, fake websites, fake pages, and so on. If you're interested in learning more, then check out the link in the description for more information. This link will also automatically apply a coupon code, which will allow you to get the course at a discounted price. Now let's go ahead and test this backdoor and see if it works. And right now we can see that we have an agent and it's active. So now to interact with that agent, we first need to type in agents. And you can see it's listing the connection, this particular connection. And the connection has a name. It's coming from this IP. And it's coming from a machine called Win MS Edge Win 10 and it's using a PowerShell code or it's running through a PowerShell process. Now to interact with this, we're still not interacting with the hacked machine. To interact with it, we're gonna have to type in interact and put the name of the agent. So the name is K6. If you just put K6 and put a tab, it'll automatically complete for you and hit enter. And now we're inside it. So if I do sysinfo, I'll get the system information. And right now we basically hacked into the target machine. We have full access to it. And we managed to do this using a backdoor that is not detectable by antivirus programs.